haven't heard from the kids for a while. I know they've been down here working on a project with the mini master pipe layer. So I'm gonna just check out, check it out, make sure everybody's doing well. <laughs> This is another racetrack project that Onyx has got going on. Usually they end up too rough or too small or too muddy or something, but he keeps at it anyway. They seem to be doing fine. Just figured I'd check in on it. Hello. We were given notice about an hour ago that the excavating company is gonna start bringing some gravel in here. This is where the old shed stood that we lost this spring. So we kind of sprayed the grass around it to kill off the grass because we are gonna go bigger, longer and wider. They're gonna start bringing some gravel in here. So we're gonna go through and just kind of finalize picking some of these things up, get these stack of tires out of the way and do some of that first so that there's room here to pile this gravel. And this morning I washed the race car so I'm gonna winch that in, get this trailer out of the way and park that where it's also out of the way. That way we can get to work on stuff that we have to work on. All right, that is moved out of the way and sitting over here ready at the shop because I got the boys coming out tonight and we're gonna do a little work on that, get it ready for the upcoming races this weekend. But that's for the second channel. Should be linked down below, it's called Between the Rows. For now, we're gonna go back to some farm stuff here. Some of this we got a specific place for and some of it we really don't, but we've pretty much thrown away what we dare throw away. There's some parts for the Moline there. There's an old uh, part of a horse harness that great grandpa or great great grandpa had out here. We know where the rest of it is, so we're gonna move that in the shop. And all of this where the shed actually sat has been picked up and the nails have been magnetized with that little cart over there that our agronomist borrowed us, so thanks to Brent. But we gotta pick up all these little pieces of stuff from when the shed flew this way, we haven't been back here yet to really hand pick all the, all the stuff up that the excavator didn't grab. There's a quarter panel from the race car I ran back in 2008. Probably bent up enough now we can get rid of it. This one's from the late model days. These sheds really seem to make quite a mess when they essentially explode at 100 miles per hour. There they are already. That was quick. When they said they were coming, they weren't joking around. Feels good to see some progress. Things are moving forward now. All right, I'm gonna fire up green lightning here and see if I can put that little pole behind magnet behind it. A little bit of smoke from her. Well, I can't, I can't run the choke and the key with only one hand. Yeah, see it won't run clean without the choke for long. Once you get the choke back, then it runs like a champ for three seconds. Maybe once it's warm. Something's running out of fuel somewhere. I'm sure it's dirty. It's not exactly our main horse, so it doesn't get top-notch top -notch maintenance every single day. I want to hook that magnet up, but I don't think it's going to let me get off of here and keep... Oh, what do you do? So there's a big magnet underneath that aluminum channel iron there. You just drive this along and it finds the nails and screws and hopefully eliminates the majority of them. Hey, I got it idling. Like a kitten at a milk pail. I'm gonna wait until the kids come down and help me pick out all these, all this scrap before I run it anymore. Are you guys ready to work? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish you always had that kind of enthusiasm. Isla, found you a really cool rock. Okay, we're gonna start here, and we're gonna go all the way around where this shed used to be. 
and I want all everything like all this and the plastic pieces anything that looks like garbage all the way around and we're just gonna go quick and everybody grab and the dead cat is somewhere you can leave that Got it. okay in the bucket that grandpa's gonna be coming with. You don't have to get them that small, Onyx, or free. They don't give them too much lenience or they won't pick anything up. Okay. Ooh, that was longer than it looked. Nice nail on that one, too. Plenty of it out in the grass here, too, out by the trees. But this is all bigger pieces. The roof actually ended up, well, the majority of it here. And what went over those trees went from here to Three quarters of a mile down the highway. Look at that. There's a big, some big pieces here. It's just everywhere. There's pieces everywhere. Look at that. There's a fiberglass skylight. There's the fourth load now already. They got two trucks moving. And we're getting this picked up, so this is nice. Found my arrow. Yeah, Onyx found one of his practice arrows. No idea how it got back there. Something spiky? There, that looks a lot better. It doesn't look good, but it looks better. I just hate having little pieces of splinters and I mean, it just looks like garbage spread everywhere. So we still got some back in the woods that need to be cleaned up, but some of those woods are gonna be taken down anyway. Some of those trees are gonna be moved to the other corner of the yard on the driveway there to fill in where we lost some of the evergreens during the storm. So we'll get there a little bit at a time. I figure as long as I've got the magnet implement hooked up, we may as well go over it a little bit. It's amazing how much more you keep picking up the more you drive around. There, I can hear them. There's one pass. There you can see all the screws on the back. A couple dozen here. There's one pass right there. I'll put it over with the others I collected from inside the building. Oh, that's good when you need it. It's after five o'clock now and it sounds like we're maybe gonna fire up the grill and grab something for supper and then I'll jump back down here to this other shop and work on the race car with the boys. So I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. Cat, are you gonna get in on the dog fight? I would suggest you stay out of it. It's supposed to get hot today, but it's a little chilly right now. I need a hoodie. That's better. They ended up bringing eight loads of gravel last night. I don't know if they're gonna be bringing more or not. And they're actually thinking in Three, four, five days they're gonna be out here to start working on this pad. And the same guys are hopefully gonna be able to help us set the piers or the cradles for the new LP tank and maybe get the LP tank in place as well. The first priority this morning is to get the planter tractor out. We actually have a few things on that planter that it needs to be taken to the dealer for, stuff that happened in the storm when the shed landed on it. So they gotta finish fixing a few things on there and make sure they got the estimate right. We're gonna pull that out, clean it up, get it ready to go, take it down to Glenwood 10 miles from here and see what we've got. I think the first thing I'll do is open it up, move it, cycle the hydraulics, cause it's been sitting here for a few weeks. I know we've got an oil leak in the back that we gotta find. Eventually I think we'll spin the brushes, clean them out, and maybe pull the brushes out. We'll see how in depth we wanna get here. Maybe deer wants it with the brushes in. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's check the oil. Now I know you want to ride, I know you do, but we haven't hit a million subscribers yet, okay? See, the real secret is she doesn't actually want to ride. I'm pretty sure she's gonna freak out when I try to carry her up these steps and into the tractor cab, but I'll do it for you guys once we hit a million. I'll do it. Her future is depending on you. Did you stand in the background because she's terrified of tractor rides. Now let's see if this thing will start after sitting for a bit. We've got juice. It's almost depressing. It makes me want to go plant some corn. Uh. Well, there's the first code of the day. The tractor won't move. I hear you beeping. There's our downforce sensor issues before I've ever started anything. There's something. Let's try again. 
Yep, the tractor's not moving. There's a 1971 Minneapolis Moline sitting over there on the back side of that expensive new tractor that I guarantee doesn't throw coats like this. Try again. Nothing. Let's unplug it and plug it back in. Ah, it makes my head hurt. I know I joke about it, but we all know the downfall to that Moline is that you can't plant it 10 miles an hour, 60 feet wide, and you get stuck if you go anywhere near the mud. But if you can't get out of the shed, then it is faster. Calibration in process. If calibration not successful, troubleshooting required. Okay. You go ahead and calibrate. No rush, no hurry. Go ahead, do your thing. It's your show here. They'll just, I'll wait. They'll wait. We're all here for you. Hey, my sunglasses. I wondered where that pair went. So, three more codes in the last 30 seconds while I sit here and idle. Okay, it wants us to unplug it and plug it back in. Yeah. Maybe a third time's a charm. Can you guys decide what's going on yet? Hey, the tractor moves anyway. Boss pulled in. But I am missing information. It appears as though the computer is not communicating with the planter. Weird. Unexplained, but not shocking. Let's see if it unfolds or anything. Well, it's communicating there. Or I don't, maybe it doesn't have to communicate. It's moving fluid anyway. Why is it so low? Oh, that's good. Sensor supply under voltage condition detected on row 12. There's obviously, we know there's a bad pin in that row, so we'll add that to the list. Here comes Dad to tell me why I shouldn't unfold it and what we're going to do first. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to empty the big hopper so it's open up first? I knew you were going to say that. I even told the camera you were going to come tell me to fold it back up. Okay, what do you think? It's, that's, a, that's what you're saying, so that's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. I've experienced that type of thing before. At least I know it unfolds and hopefully folds back up. Well, the screen is now communicating, so it knows the planter's there, so that's good. But the first thing we'll do is use the skid steer to get underneath the main tanks. There's very little seed left in there, but they do have to pull the tanks off because the tanks are kind of wonky from the shed falling on them. So we are going to empty those completely out. We've got just a few extra units of seed stored down in here. So we're going to drain the little bit that's left in here and get this thing completely empty. Yeah, that wasn't a lot. It wasn't much, was it? No, not a lot extra. Shoot, we could have just dumped that on the ground. We sure should have. Maybe the other side's got more. Maybe, we never looked. Uh, it isn't much. I believe there was 26 extra seeds left in there. Those are done. Now I'm going to move closer to the air compressor. We're going to go through each row unit and pull out the bowls, the bowls, dump the seed. You know, generally go through, take the things out. And they are bowls, by the way. A few farmers out there will correct me saying they're plates. Not in the exact emerge row units. They're bowls. We're just getting more parts of the kitchen utensils in these planters as we go. I guess bowls and plates are not really utensils, are they? Oh, hmm, communication issues with the computers. Yes, yes, okay, yes, okay. Hey, at least it moves. I unfolded it. I'm trying to cycle the brushes before we take those out or loosen them up. I'm trying to cycle them, but I can't even communicate with the planter to get them cycled. This is so maddening. Unreal. Told off. I'm trying to cycle the brushes to get the seed out, but I can't communicate with the planter to do it. We need to we need to cycle that because we don't want the seed sitting in there all year. Right, it'll be in the tubes. Yeah, well it's in the brushes. Okay, you can't I can't do anything because it can't communicate with the planter. It doesn't know it's there again. So it unfolds, but the hydraulics are jumping all over and it doesn't know that the planter is on it. Yeah, so what we'll see, I don't know. We got something going on up here too. There's a mat that massive leak. But we'll just we'll let them know about that, let them look at it. 
Let's try it again. I'm starting to get mad now my hoodie's too warm. Got hot out again or something. And my ears are on fire a little bit. It appears as though we have communication now. Yeah. Then I made that mistake. Good news, the brushes are purged. We have communication. Now I can back it up and we can start cleaning out the row units before we bring it into town. I'd pull the pull the deal open first. And then it'll fit better underneath there. Yeah, it makes it easier anyway. Isla, where are you going? Okay, you got your kitty? And there's a load of gravel already for the day. We're gonna run out of room over there. There's not gonna be spots to pile that gravel pretty soon. So the bowls and the zip strippy things, I don't know what they're actually called, they're out. So now, we take some compressed air and clean out just to make sure they're totally cleared out. And the last step will be to get in underneath the green cover there and loosen the tension on the belts. So we were kind of randomly staring down into the tank here of soybeans trying to decide what to do with these at this point and I see an o-ring down in there. However that is not an o-ring. That's, that's the uh, silicone wedding ring that I lost this spring. <laughs> <laughs> Had no idea where it went, wasn't really worried about it because they're nine dollars there we go i got that back that was one of my favorite ones <laughs> well that's kind of handy i wondered where that one went i got home one night this spring and just realized i was missing it which is not uncommon that happens a few times a year that's why i wear the silicone ones all cleaned out i'm going to fold it up here now and head to town with it oh please just be able to drive and communicate on the first startup <laughs> Look at that, it folded, it communicated, the tractor drives, and we got more gravel being dumped back here. All good things. And the neighbor kids are over on their four-wheelers to go tear stuff up with the kids. I'll let them know where their new track is at. Now we got the two neighbor boys, we got the mini master pipe layer out there, we got Onyx and my girls. It's like a little motorcycle, not motorcycle, like a, like a four-wheeler gang going on down there. It's a lot cooler than playing video games, so I'll let them roll with it. Road construction here locally sends me in the back way now, which actually isn't bad. And my chauffeur is already here. Here's our four-wheeler gang awaiting our arrival. What do you suppose they want? It looks like an awful lot of them. They're waiting for something. I'm scared to get out and find out what they need. They were just taking a break from all their shenanigans down there at their racetrack. One of them actually went over to the neighbor's place to get a little box blade because apparently it's not smooth enough. Now we're cleaning up some of these old totes. We got some guys coming. We threw them on Facebook Marketplace and we got some guys coming to pick up some of these. We had like two dozen of them back there and we need most of them gone before we can start this shed prep. Just talk to the excavators back here that are bringing the gravel in and it sounds like they're going to bring three, four more loads and actually bring the dozer out tonight. So now we got, we're going to start the trucks, fill them with diesel, get the diesel tanks empty because we're going to be moving those over to this bin pad here for the fall. And we need them out of the way to work on the shed. We're going to be scrambling to move some stuff here because once those guys show up with the dozer, they go right to town. They don't waste time. I'm willing to bet this, this one will start, but I don't know if both of them will start. That'd be pretty rare. One. I guess they've only been sitting for five days, maybe a week, so maybe it, it'll probably start. This one does nothing. Absolutely nothing, not even a light, not a flicker. I jinxed it with my overconfidence. And we'll just wait on that one. I'm gonna wait 
wait until dad's done driving back and forth because I got to run a cord out to that barrel. So in the meantime, I'm going to go pick up a few more things that we need picked up. These, this is a collection of old race car doors from the last 23 years that I've raced. For the race fans, I won't get into why these all say 73 on them and I currently race the 6X. You'll have to watch the second channel for that. I'll explain it sometime. Anyway, these were all against the wall in that shed when it decided to separate. So these were scattered everywhere. Now we've got, well, there's one down there too. Anyway, I, I don't want to throw most of them away, so I'll just move them for now, put them in the way somewhere else. That's a 2017. That's a 2013. This is also, oh, I was wrong, that's a 2016. This is a 13. Four up, but this one's got a story behind it. Also turned 2013. 2015. 16. These are all late model doors. Some of you don't even know I ran late model. This is a 2010. Check this old pump out. Does anybody know anything about these where a guy could maybe get it restored or what to do with it? Grandpa actually, great grandpa, used this one around the farm so it would be cool to restore it and do something with it, but it's been sitting here so long, we just don't know what to do with it. This truck's still charging. It's taking a good charge now though. I think I'll just let that keep going for a bit. And there's more gravel. I don't know how many dumps are there, but it's quite a bit. Check this out. My monthly shipment is here. It's like Christmas in August. I'll just get this table ready and we'll do this from the back of the old Scottsdale. The Spoke Post is the monthly membership club that I belong to that's actually free to join. And every month they send you stuff from some of these really cool under the radar brands. So you can get like outdoor gear, some cool clothing stuff, camping stuff, all kinds of things. And it's all based on a quiz that you take when you join. Now the cool part is each one of these boxes these three boxes, they're actually valued at around $70, but you actually only pay a fraction of that as a member and you only keep what you want. So if you get some stuff that you realize like you're not gonna use, you don't really want, you can send it right back and swap boxes or skip the month completely free of charge. And even cooler, about 90% of the products that are in these boxes come from small businesses of which tons of them are actually located right here in the US. Here's the first box that I got. This one is called Beam. This is, uh, this is the name of the box this month. Hey, look at that. I believe that is a headlamp. Whoops. Box two. This box is called Explore. Here's another headlamp right here. This will absolutely be used, especially by the kids when we're doing our camping. Some sort of energy bar, energy snack for when you're out camping. That'll come in handy sometime. Got the Nomad Packable Backpack. There we go. Now I can load up my favorite beverage. This one is called Wren. This is a compact camp chair in a, in a bag. Look at that. If any of you guys are interested in becoming members and getting 20% off your first box that gets delivered directly to your door full of cool stuff, all you gotta do is click on the link down below and use the checkout code MFarmer20 or go to bespokepost.com slash mfarmer20. They'll have you take a quick questionnaire that looks just like this to figure out exactly what you might be interested in. And then they're just gonna start sending you really cool stuff that's valued at a higher price than you're paying for it that comes from small businesses and a lot of them located right here in the US. Look at this. Click the link down below. It's real easy. Just try it. <laughs> go show my wife all my cool new stuff and then since it's such a nice night maybe throw some chunks of meat on the grill sounds like we're gonna be spraying some soybean aphids tomorrow I just talked to the agronomist and it sounds like it's time so watch for that in the next video thank you guys for watching